What is going on everybody? It's been about three months since I traded my 2008 Tiffin Phaeton for this 2017 Mercedes Leisure Travel Van. I owned that Tiffin for about two years so I got a lot of great use out of it and I've gotten a lot of uh, use out of this Leisure Travel Van over the last three months. I've put almost 10,000 miles on it spent a lot of nights in it so i thought i would make a video today letting you guys know the pluses and minuses of class a versus class c or class b plus a lot of people refer to these as a class b plus it is on the sprinter chassis so i'll get right to it um the pluses and minuses and i'm just going to kind of go back and forth shooting from the hip i've been thinking about this a lot and uh, it, it's fresh on my mind just because i just made the transfer so um, the first, the, the biggest benefit of the Leisure Travel Van is going to be how nimble it is. It's very easy to maneuver. Uh, you can make a U-turn on regular streets. You can go to regular gas stations instead of truck stops. One thing that I learned when I made the transition is if you have a fuel station that's on the same corner and one of them is a truck stop with truck lanes, the fuel is usually 30 cents a gallon more expensive. So with the leisure travel i can be more nimble pay a lot less on fuel and i don't have to go to the truck lanes um, also being able to just pull into like a restaurant like the other day i was having lunch at a first watch I was driving by in my leisure travel van saw first watch made a u-turn pulled into the parking lot huge advantage to that where in a diesel pusher you're not able to maneuver as quickly uh, when I was in my diesel pusher, I always tried to stay on interstates, uh, truck stops, and RV resorts just because with a, a rig that big, you can get into tight situations easier. They're more meant for the larger areas. When you fuel up in a Class A, you're going to have a lot bigger diesel fuel tank. Even though this does get much better fuel mileage, I would say this gets closer to 15 and change when I was only getting about 5.3 in my Tiffin. I did have a 100 gallon in the Tiffin, where in the Class C, I think it's only about a 25 gallon. It almost seems like you're fueling up more often in the Class C than you are in the Tiffin. Um, and then if you get into like a Prevo or a Newell, those have 200 plus gallon fuel tanks, so you can drive halfway across the country without fueling up. And, and that brings up one of the big pluses of the class a is i miss all of the carrying capacities uh, not only do you have the big diesel fuel tank but you have a big water tank um, one of the biggest downsides to this is it's got a much smaller holding tanks both the fresh water and the black and gray i can only go in this for about a couple of days before i run out of either fresh water or my gray water fills up where in my Tiff and Phaeton, I could go a week or two by myself. I, I'm traveling single, so imagine if it was a couple, um, they would probably need to almost fill up water every day. You can only really take a couple showers in the leisure travel, or you have to be very stingy with the water. I probably should have been more stingy. I was, I've been used to being able to take long showers in my Tiff and this, you probably want to turn the water off when you're not rinsing yourself off and really conserve water it's not only are your water carrying capacities but your storage the class a i had much more uh much larger storage bins so i could bring a lot more of my stuff with where this you're really limited uh as to what you can bring now they did utilize the space i gotta tip my hat to the folks at Le leisure travel van the way this was engineered it's it's incredible how much storage is packed into this small footprint. So one of the other uh, big downsides to the Leisure Travel Van is not being able to go to Class A RV resorts. Uh, I like to hang out in the big Class A RV resorts, and usually you'll stay there for a longer period of time. Where me personally, where I'm at in life, and one of the big reasons I switched to the smaller rig is. I don't stay anywhere for very long. I stay on the move. I don't know if you guys can tell by all the different YouTube videos I make, but I like to uh, I like to stay on the go, stay where the action's at. So I'm traveling a lot, um, and it's it's harder for me to move quickly in a Class A RV. Uh, but moving to the Class C, I'm not able to stay at the real nice resorts. Uh, but it's worked out like an example uh, last week I was hanging out with Dean Laux uh, in Las Vegas and normally he would go to uh, LVM but for him for this trip Oasis worked better 
because they have the big pull through sites. And then when I went up to Vegas, it worked out well because I was in the same park. So like when we were going out to dinner, you know, it's just more convenient to be able to stay at the same park where your friend's at uh, in a class C. Class A, you're, you're limited. Now, I will give one of the huge benefits to the leisure travel vans is the Harvest Host access. I've had a ball staying at uh, different Harvest Host locations and I've done a horrible job at vlogging. I had a bunch of footage that I lost um, showing a bunch of cool Harvest Hosts that I stayed at. Uh, there was one um, in Katy, Colorado called Battleship uh, Brewing. It was like a random brewery uh, right off of I-10 there, really convenient. I stayed at a winery in New Mexico. I did make a video all about that stay. Really fun, easy stay. I stayed at a museum somewhere in Texas, uh, the the oil field museum. I believe it was in Abilene, uh, Texas. It might have been in Midland, Texas, somewhere in that area. I was I've been zigzagging around in this leisure travel van. I've been to Oklahoma. Texas, Florida, Las Vegas, uh, back and forth all over. I've already put 10,000 miles in just under three months. So I've definitely been getting my use out. I've stayed in friends' driveways. There was another great harvest host in Alabama called uh, the best bacon in the world. Uh, it was called uh, Billy's. It was a restaurant. It was about 20 minutes off the interstate, but uh, the harvest hosts are definitely worth checking out. There's all these different cool places where um, if you if you don't know about the Harvest Host membership, uh, it's like eighty dollars a year. Uh, but if you use my coupon code in the description below, it gets you a discount, and then it gives me fifteen bucks as well. So I greatly appreciate all of you that have signed up uh, for Harvest Host using my code. I know there's a bunch of you that have signed up, and I really appreciate that. Definitely, I think that's the biggest plus of owning this Class C is you can get to more Harvest Hosts. Where sometimes with the bigger Class A's, not all of those places can handle the big 45 foot coaches. So, you know, I know a lot of you have been asking about Sadie Lady. I know dogs are, are a real important part of the journey. Uh, Sadie Lady's, uh, she likes the, the leisure travel van a little bit. She, she, I think she's a little camera shy this morning. She's looking for a. Uh, she's looking for the action outside there. To be honest, it makes it a little more difficult to get around. I find myself stepping over her more often. Um, not a lot of space for a dog. So two people and a dog, it might get a little tight in the leisure travel van. O overall, they both have their pluses and minuses. Those are just a few that are the freshest on my mind, the biggest differences that I've personally noticed. Now, everybody has different needs. I think if you're moving around more often and you need to be a little more nimble, a class C is, is gonna be a better option. If you're gonna take your time and stay in places for longer I mean, and you enjoy the real nice upscale class A RV resorts, I definitely recommend a class A. But you know, to, to each his own, everybody has different, different needs and different wants. Um, you do get kind of capped out in quality when you get into smaller stuff. Uh, this definitely isn't that same level of build quality like a $2 million motor coach. This is more the level of build quality of like a high-end production coach, like a Tiffin Allegro bus, or like a Newmar Mountaineer uh, build quality wise. It's, it's about the same as my Tiffin too. And that's the thing is I just made another video about the first five problems that I had with my leisure travel van. And it's all little stuff, but I like to be transparent with you guys. And I was transparent with you guys on my Tiffin. Uh, a lot of people were like afraid of Tiffin Phaetons because of all the problems I had. but. That's any RV, there's no RV that's immune to it. You have an earthquake going down the road, so you're gonna need to just fix stuff, and that, that's a big part of it. But overall, I would say that the Tiffin, Phaeton, and the Leisure Travel Van are about equal in build quality. I, I like some of the engineering stuff that the, the Leisure Travel Van has. They, they have some really clever stuff. Uh, on this coach and there's a nine year difference in age so it's not really a fair comparison but overall I don't regret making the change it's where I'm at in life I, I move around so quickly and I even find myself taking airplanes a lot and this sits in storage because I need to move around so quickly. I'd love to know what kind of other videos you guys want me to make uh, about my leisure travel van. Please drop a comment below. I appreciate all of the requests and, and questions that you guys drop in the comment section. I appreciate all of you that are subscribing and helping me get closer to that goal of 100,000 subscribers. I hope to have some uh, good stuff coming for you here in the near future. So I greatly appreciate all of you and I hope you're all having a great day. Thanks again.